The number of people who are homeless each night is on the rise across the country, including right here in New Mexico. According to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, our state had a 20% increase in reported homelessness last year. That's compared to just one year before in 2016. New Mexico also has one of the highest rates of homeless veterans. Now, being homeless can be dangerous. In 2014, two Navajo men were brutally beaten to death in Albuquerque. And in March, a Navajo man was fatally shot on a street near the freeway. Correspondent Antonio Gonzalez sits down this week with members of two groups that are focusing on homeless Native Americans. They say that by humanizing people on the streets, it helps address other concerns for health and well-being of people who are experiencing instability in their housing. Jennifer Danette Dell is a researcher and college educator and serves on the Navajo Nation Human Rights Commission. And Will Riding is with First Nations Community Health Source and the Albuquerque Native American Homelessness Task Force. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer, homelessness can include and look different ways, including temporary housing where people find with their family or friends, including Native people who may be going back to their tribal communities back and forth. Can you tell us what homelessness looks like right now in Albuquerque for the Native population? Well, I think um, the number of Native people who are on the, on the streets here in Albuquerque, uh, a fair number of them are um, Navajo. And I think we also should consider that many of them often move back and forth from their uh, communities on the Navajo Nation and come into urban spaces like Albuquerque. So it's more of a kind, uh, it's more of a moving back and forth. And what do you see is the greatest threat facing Native people who are living on the streets? Well, there's a number of, of um, issues that they face. And I think um, one of the one of the ones that I've seen when I've been as a as I've been a commissioner on the Navajo Nation Human Rights Commission is really the amount of violence they face first from residences the residents of of um, Albuquerque but also from the police. And um, in your work you also look at other reservation border towns have you seen changes when it comes to addressing this issue in Albuquerque and other border towns? I think that's a question that is now being uh, ans asked once again, especially in the light of the murder of Ronnie Ross, a Navajo man who was from Shiprock and who was murdered, um, shot multiple times here in Albuquerque in March. And prior to that, um, there was a national attention to the killing of um, Allison Gorman and Key Thompson. And that was when also, once again, we had raised questions about um, the conditions that our relatives on the streets face. And so we continue again to have those same questions. And Will, with you and the time that you've been on the streets talking to people, what are some of the contributing factors that you heard for them being unsheltered and needing services? Yeah, so um, um, during my time as a outreach coordinator, um, you know, we would go out to uh, the streets and hand out food to homeless individuals. Uh, but one thing I saw was a lot of people came into town um, looking for work and um, you know they may have been working for a few weeks um, but you know anyone could be um, homeless you know it can happen to anyone you know maybe um, mom gets sick she has to take care of her children a um, couple missed days at work and then you know she's at risk of being homeless or she gets evicted so those are some of the things I saw a lot of and um, you know homelessness can take um, multiple forms you know people can be living in shelters they could be on the streets or they could also be couch surfing mm -hmm. And with uh, First Nations, you offer a lot of different services. Um, when it comes to people being evicted from their homes, what does it take for an individual maybe to get back on their feet and to get back into finding housing? Yeah, so if an um, individual gets uh, evicted once, you know, it's kind of hard. Um, you know, a lot of uh, apartment complexes have um, do extensive background checks. So if they've been evicted before, it makes it a little tough for them to um, get into housing again. Um, you know, a lot of them have to wait uh, several years before they can erase it off their records. Um, but in regards to, um, you know, folks getting into housing, there are housing organizations out there. Um, there's multiple low-income um, apartments here in Albuquerque. And then also subsidized housing, and there's also housing programs for uh, veterans as well. And with your work on the commission, um, what has been the top recommendation for the city? Um, so in 2017, um, after we were appointed, we created a... Uh, a uh, report and gave it to uh, former Mayor Barry 
and um, our number one um, recommendation was um, designating a full-time travel liaison for the city of Albuquerque. And uh, Jennifer, what do you have to add to um, the commission's work when you see uh, not only tribal leaders talking about this issue, but just community members in the Native American community here in Albuquerque. What are some of the needs that needs to address the issue? Well, one of the things that we really, really need, um, in addition to having um, the city of Albuquerque take this issue seriously, um, and seriously, I mean by providing more resources and looking at the amount of violence that the, uh, our unsheltered relatives experience on the streets, um, but we also need our nearby um, Native nations to also um, take a look at this issue because it is our citizens who are um, here here in the streets. And so um, it's been very difficult to bring tribal leaders to the table to talk about these issues and that still needs to be, it, it's something that we really need to do. And that's what the Navajo Nation Human Rights Commission is attempting um, as we visit with the mayor's office once again. And beyond just having dialogue, what are some of the challenges? Why is it difficult, you know, to, to find, I guess, solutions to, to addressing some of the issues people are facing on the streets? These issues are so vast. Um, and I, as a historian myself, I tend to look at these issues um, structurally. And I think that um, the structures, the infrastructures on Native nations just um, is not, doesn't have the capacity to provide um, for uh, our citizens as um, Will, is that right? Mm -hmm. As Will mentioned, um, many of our people come into this town looking for jobs and there's, we simply have a very high poverty rate, for example, on the Navajo Nation, you know, and then there's just very few resources for um, rehabilitation, for alcohol, um, treatment uh, and those are services that still um, need to be provided and it's I also just from talking to people understand that it's very difficult once a person makes a decision to change their lives um, to access resources treatment you know things like that so there's still so much that needs to be done to to address these dire needs and as a researcher as an educator as an advocate um, talk about the social ills that colonization has been part of. Well, um, you know, we, the Navajo Nation Human Rights Commission was formed in 2006 after a Navajo man by the name of Clint um, John was killed by a white police officer in Farmington, New Mexico. So um, we have worked to support families um, who have to deal with these violent situations. We. Um, came into Albuquerque and supported the family of Allison Gorman and Key Thompson, and um, we have had dialogue with the family of Ronnie Ross. Um, so um, I just think that these are just, it's just, it's um, historical, you know, and in the 70s there was t um, termed a coin, uh, coined a term Indian, Indian rolling. Um, in Farmington in the 1970s, there was white teenagers um, who mutilated and tortured three Navajo men, and that's where the term came from. And so when um, the uh, men who murdered Ronnie Ross say they did it, um, they killed him just for fun, then, um, you know, this kind of um, attitude and behavior towards Native peoples um, is deeply embedded in the systems. And being that Native people here, this is their traditional homelands. Yes, um, we're often told, and uh, the, our relatives on the streets are also told that you don't belong here, um, go home. Uh, and we'd, we'd look at it from the perspective that um, this is um, indigenous lands and we are not out of place, that we belong here. And Will Jennifer had mentioned um, substance abuse and how some people on the streets are often struggling with substance abuse. Mm -hmm. um, what does First Nations um, do to help people who want to overcome any type of substance abuse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, First Nations has partnerships with um, MATS and then also um, Turquoise Lodge. So for um, individuals who do want to get into treatment, um, once they go through the intake process and speak with the case manager, um, you know, for instance, like the Homeless Outreach Program, um, you know, they'll get them um, situated and then they can try to fast track them into um, getting those services. Hmm. And then in addition, um, we do have um, outpatient 
um, rehabilitation. And then also we have um, substance abuse counselors, AA meetings, and um, individual counseling as well. And you also have a traditional component as well? Yeah, so we have a traditional healing program. Um, you know, they provide a holistic-based approach to, um, you know, Western medicine. We have a uh, sweat lodge that they do on Friday nights and then on Saturdays also. And they do uh, men and women sweats. And so how does helping an individual get over substance abuse, um, whether it's drugs or alcohol, how can that help them get into more stable housing? Yeah, so I think, you know, once, um, <clears throat> you know, an individual overcomes alcoholism or addiction, you know, I think they can start thinking clearly and then, um, you know, have their the right mindset into getting into housing and help them um, start focusing on what they need to accomplish and get done. And uh, Jennifer, what would you like to see done here in Albuquerque to help address the homelessness among Native people here? That's such a hard question and I wish that I had an answer to that question. Um, I think that there needs to be continue to be a network of support. Um, we also, um, many of us, um, tend to look the other way um, and not even acknowledge our unsheltered relatives as human beings. And so I think um, one of my students who works at Healthcare for the Homeless told me that just the, uh, even just the uh, public recognition or awareness through education like what we're doing here um, has, um, had people acknowledge homeless do a little bit more in terms of um, support and donation. So I, I know people in the past couple of years who, who um, go and um, offer their services or donate to these facilities that offer support. Um, they have um, feed, feed uh, people at a breakfast somewhere downtown on Saturday mornings. And so those, kind, those are some of the things that I've seen happening. And what about you, Will? What do you see that some of the needs um, to help address the problem here in Albuquerque? Um, I think, you know, employment's a big one. Um, at First Nations, we do offer a job development at our All Nations Willing and Healing Center. Um, and then in addition, you know, we do provide um, two more meals a day, Monday through Friday, for individuals. Um, but I think, you know, if people can get the job skills, um, you know, they can build a pretty good resume, I think, you know, that might be the key into entering the uh, work field again. Well, thank you so much for both of you um, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.